Welcome to For the Record, I'm Will Keneally. We start this week in Washington, where the House of Representatives named a new speaker. And the Biden administration shortly afterward tasked the chamber with getting to work. The president outlined a key list of domestic priorities that he wants to fund for the next year and asked Congress to approve emergency funds. Now that includes things like funding for child care, a key issue here in the Badger State. And joining us now for more on how things are shaping up in D.C. is Democratic Senator Tammy Baldwin. And thanks so much for joining us. I'm delighted to join you. Thanks for having me. Um, so how much of a concern is there right now about this funding and needing to pass it ahead of any government shutdown talks next month? You know, we are in a child care crisis in the United States, and Wisconsin is no exception. No matter where I travel, I am hearing uh, dire situations of uh, there being no availability or uh, it's unaffordable if there are uh, child care slots available in the area. And, you know, the, the crisis means that um, uh, parents aren't able to uh, be in the workforce if they need to be home uh, with their children or children um, are deprived of the, the great start that we want all of our children to get off to uh, in a safe and high quality child care uh, environment. Uh, and so we really need to uh, step up uh, and make sure that um, we have the, the type of investment in our child care system uh, that allows uh, parents to be in the workforce and know, uh, have the peace of mind that their children are in a safe, nurturing uh, environment. So in Wisconsin, child care providers have largely relied on this pandemic era grant. Uh, right. Understanding that it would be extended for about an extra year here, is that going to be enough for these providers? That's why we have to pass this emergency uh, uh, spending uh, domestic supplemental um, because it won't be enough. Uh, right now we are seeing uh, child care centers close. We are seeing uh, uh, teachers leave the profession because they're so underpaid. And um, we have areas of the state of Wisconsin right now that are known as child care deserts. That means for every one child care uh, slot available, there are three or more children uh, that are lined up uh, to uh, be able to use that child care slot. And um, so you know, we have a real emergency right now, and it's exactly why we need to pass this emergency funding uh, to stabilize our child care uh, network in the state of Wisconsin. So back in Wisconsin here this week, we were designated as a regional tech hub for biohealth. What kind of stuff does that unlock here for the Badger State? Yeah, so I was proud to champion legislation called the Chips and Science Act, which passed last year, that created this tech hub system. Um, and we competed in Wisconsin with our, uh, with our application um, with over 370 other uh, applications around the country. And we, uh, we came out ahead. We we're one of 31 that were designated as tech hubs. It's a consortium of 15 entities, some public sector, some private sector, that are looking at everything from uh, innovation, research and development, all the way to commercialization in the space of personalized medicine and um, the ability to really uh, change our response to cancer as we know it and to other debilitating chronic conditions. Um, and I was so excited about all the partners that have come together. We should be proud of these amazing assets of world-class research institutions, um, innovative uh, and pioneering biotech companies, as well as our ability to manufacture and make things in Wisconsin and do so in a highly efficient and automated way. Um, we have, uh, I think, a gem in this uh, Tech Hub uh, uh, designation, and this will allow us to compete for uh, uh, funding uh, in phase two of this program. So I'm curious too, we talk a lot about uh, brain drained here in Wisconsin and this idea of net migration. Uh, does this designation uh, do anything to help draw people back into the state? Without a doubt, this is going to be a draw. If we, um, so the next phase will uh, include um, significant uh, funding uh, for our tech hub if we, uh, you know, sort of win the next competition, which will be five designations out of the 31 that have already been uh, uh, designated in this first phase. 
And, um, you know, this would not only be, uh, we would not only be an exciting place where this innovation and commercialization is going on, but people want to be a part of uh, breakthroughs in um, in health and personalized medicine and biotechnology. Uh, so I think that um, uh, we would be a place that's attracting uh, the best and brightest because of this um, designation, as well as, again, each of the uh, consortium members are, um, uh, are, are innovative uh, uh, companies uh, or uh, universities uh, already. And we know that you've been pushing for this for a very long time here. Senator Baldwin, thanks so much for joining us. Really appreciate it. Thank you.